In a world where the clouds have taken over, and it always seems to be raining, a team has arisen to battle the thunder and the lightning and part the clouds. This is the story of the Moad Cloud Team. The Cloud Admin, the SRE, the VI Admin, and the Network Admin. With the power of vRealize Cloud Management at their fingertips, the team can amass an army of artificial intelligence and automation and also have the opportunity to take a break once in a while, knowing their cloud is protected and running well. Our team is assembled at the Massachusetts Omni Automated Devices headquarters, a robotics firm serving manufacturing, shipping, healthcare, and agricultural industries. Recently, Moad went consumer focused when their CEO discovered a whole new market in the world's youth and started selling robotics kits directly through the web. This is the story of how the Moad Cloud team transformed their organization into a retail giant with VMware Cloud Management. Hi, I'm Matt Bradford, Staff Technical Marketing Architect for vRealize Operations. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at how the vRealize suite can handle everything from our day zero provisioning all the way through our day two actions, right? That maintenance and upkeep and making sure that our deployed applications and services continue to run well throughout their entire life cycle. Now, just like Moad automated their production lines for the robotics products, they've also gone ahead and automated the deployment of their applications and of their services. So for this first part of the demonstration, I'm gonna be playing the role of the site reliability engineer. And I want to deploy a copy of our retail shopping cart, so I need to do some testing here. So I'm gonna start off in vRealize Automation Service Broker, and I can see the catalog of items that I can request, as well as you know what is my resource consumption? How much of Moad's infrastructure am I consuming? How many virtual machines do I have? How much CPU, memory, and disk is being consumed by me? In this case, we're starting with a clean slate. So, you know, down here with the catalog item, a couple different options for our retail shopping cart. I have a plain retail shopping cart, which is what we'll end up deploying today. But I also have a version of the retail shopping cart that uses a load balancer. So a much more highly available, uh, you know, version uh, deployment of our retail shopping cart. And this would be good for things like if I wanted to do some sort of uh, load testing or maybe even deploying to production, I could use this. So with vRealize Automation, it's not just spinning up virtual machines, but also handling all of that networking side of things as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and request our retail shopping cart here. And I've got a number of options. Now, think of this from the role of the SRE, right? This is nice. I can go in and I can configure this how I want this deployment to be. But from the VI admin and the cloud admin side, this is also really nice because I can limit what our SREs and app teams and developers can actually deploy, right? So for example, um, node size. SRE, I've got small, medium, and large, but to the VI admin and cloud admin, these actually mean you know, how much CPU, memory, and disk do these virtual machines consume. And of course, we can control who has the option to deploy what. I can configure uh, my admin passwords, my users, um, but I can also select what environment I want to deploy to. Because vRealize Automation, we can deploy to uh, any number of clouds. And in this case, I have the option to deploy to AWS, Azure, or vSphere, which in this case is VMware Cloud Foundation. So I'm gonna start off with giving this deployment a name, at vMug Open Cart. Now with this deployment, I'm a little cost conscious, right? We're doing show back here at Moad. So I wanna see how much this deployment is going to cost Moad to run. And so, you know, vRealize Automation is connected to vRealize Operations. So it's going out saying, hey, here's the deployment. Here are all the machine, virtual machine configurations. How much is this going to cost to run? And in this case, it's $1.70 a day. Not too bad. Well, let's see what large would cost. Go ahead and update that. Again, we're reaching out to vRealize Operations and we're pulling in that data here. 
to get our daily price estimate. In this case, it's $2.48 a day. That's a little too rich for my blood. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this a small deployment. I'm only doing some light testing anyways for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. Now, while that is going through and deploying, let's take a look at an existing deployment here. We're gonna look at our production deployment. So if I search for production, here's our Moad production shopping cart. Now within here, I can see the blueprint of what we're deploying, right? We've got our network here. Um, I have a front end web server and a back end MySQL server. Pay no attention to the load gen, that's just part of the demonstration here. Um, I can select either of these virtual machines, so say my SQL, get some you know, general information about this, like what is the IP address? How do I connect to this virtual machine? Um, of course, networking information, and I can see custom properties. Uh, things like tags that are associated with this virtual machine, and that comes pretty important uh, later on here. I can also look at the history of this deployment. So I can see that this deployment was created by my teammate Chris back in February of 2020, and it's gone through a number of uh, you know, resized boot disks. We've changed the lease on this, so with Viverlice Automation, I can say, hey, if I deploy this uh, you know, service or these virtual machines, I only want them to last for a given amount of time. So for testing, right, I could say that's a week and then just go ahead and automatically delete those. Of course, you, as you can see here, you can extend that lease as well. So, you know, that's kind of a history of, you know, everything that's happened with this deployment. Um, but I can also take a look at the price. So how much has this cost my organization over the past year? And I can look month by month, daily and weekly costs um, for this. But then also, as an SRE, I kind of want to see what's happening under the hood here, right? And I want to see how is my, you know, how are my virtual machines performing? And in this case, my front end is running a little bit hot here, right? We can see CPU is, uh, you know, up over 100%, so it's demanding, it's asking for more CPU than it's actually getting. There's a little bit of contention there. That could be an infrastructure issue. I don't know. I'm going to want to talk to my VI admin to see what's going on with that. Um, but I can also see things like memory usage, IOPS, and networking information for this deployment as well. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to my cloud administrator to show you the inner workings of this blueprint. Hey everybody, Moad's cloud administrator here, and I want to show you how we're using vRealize Automation to carve up our infrastructure so that our SREs, our developers, our application teams, right, all of the IT consumers can utilize that. And we're starting off here in Cloud Assembly in vRealize Automation, and we're looking at the various cloud accounts. So this is really the starting point for vRealize Automation. This is where we tell vRealize Automation how to connect to our various AWS accounts, Azure accounts, vSphere accounts, uh, and NSX accounts. Once I've got all of this configured, I can then carve things up even more, right? So I can go in to our various cloud zones here and you can see I've got a cloud zone for Phoenix, I've got uh, AWS, uh, VCF, right? And I've got all these various tags here. So we're gonna get to that in just a minute or two. But let's jump into our vCenter 3 um, cloud zone here. And let me show you how this is carved up. So within here, I have this resource pool, right? For this uh, E2E uh, perm resource pool. And you can notice that I've got the various tags associated with this. So any sort of deployment that has the tag environment BCA is going to get put into this resource pool. Now I can also do other things like storage profiles and network profiles and say, hey, if you're going to deploy, right, I want you to use thin provisioning or I want you to use this data store or that data store. This is where we can go and configure all of that. Now, there's a couple other options that we gave to our SRE, starting with the flavor mapping. So this is our t-shirt sizes, our small, medium, and large. And if we jump into small here, we can take a look and see how this is configured. You can see I've got this configured per um, you know, cloud zone here. And for all of my vCenters, these are virtual machines with one vCPU and two gigs of memory. Also for AWS and Azure, I've got this configured for T2 small and for uh, a B1MS within Azure. So 
as an SRE and an application person, I don't need to know what size, you know, I don't have to go and look that up. I don't need to look up what a T2 small is, for example. I just know small, medium, and large, our cloud administrators have taken care of all of this for me. So same with the image mappings. Remember how we could uh, you know, decide what flavor of Ubuntu or uh, Windows we want to deploy, right? I've got our different flavor mappings within here. And so if we look at say Ubuntu 18.04, psych, we're gonna take a look at Ubuntu 18. And within here, you know, this is where basically we're pointing to all those various templates that we have. So um, for our various vCenters, right? These are the uh, virtual machines that we want to deploy. But then also again, from AWS and Azure, we want to sort of map that to their various image types. So now let's jump into the design here um, and take a look at some of the blueprints. So I wanna take a look at the blueprint for our open cart uh, retail application. So I can look at the one with the load balancer. Let's take a look at that. That's a little more interesting and exciting to take a look at. So here, you know, on the left-hand side, we have all our various object types. I've got cloud agnostic, uh, you know, objects. So these are virtual machines I can deploy regardless of whether I'm deploying to vSphere or uh, Azure AWS, right? Without having to retool these, I can just drag these onto my blueprint and it's all taken care of. Or of course I can look at, you know, vSphere, virtual machines, NSX, uh, AWS objects, all of those types of things here, right? Now you'll notice, uh, obviously in the middle is our, our blueprint here. And on the right hand side is the code. So I'm not a very strong coder. You know, I dabble in, in things like PowerShell and, and whatnot, but I wouldn't consider myself, you know, somebody who's able to sort of bang out a blueprint like this just by typing in, um, you know, code here. So what I can actually do is I can just go ahead and drag a new virtual machine into our deployment. And you'll notice here that uh, vRealize Automation has actually already started to populate that code for me. So I can put in um, things like, you know, what image is this virtual machine? What flavor is it, right? I can do all this stuff without having to write any sort of code. That's kind of cool. Um, down here, you know, we can see the load balancer and I have a sev uh, several front end virtual machines as well as our MySQL virtual machine. And, you know, we kind of talked about tags a little bit here with some of the various cloud accounts and uh, um, cloud zones and profiles and all of that sort of stuff, right? And this is where we configure all of that. So, you know, for these various inputs that we provide to our SREs, uh, you know, depending upon what those are, we're actually leveraging these tags. So in this case, if our SRE selects AWS, right, we're going to apply this tag to this virtual machine that's ENV AWS. And that's how vRealize Automation knows, okay, I need to deploy this into you know, my cloud zone that has that tag on it. Also going in here into the inputs, this is where we can configure all the, you know, variables and the things that our SREs can, um, you know, really input, right? And if I go back to the code here, you actually see where, you know, if input environment equals AWS, apply this tag. If input equals Azure, uh, apply this tag, right? And vSphere, so on and so forth. So that's how we can take all of this stuff and, you know, make something of it, right? So let's go into our deployments here and it looks like our vMug open cart has completed. So let me just show you what this looks like in here. Of course, I have the topology view, right? And just like our SRE can see um, all of like the general configuration information and so forth. Um, again, we've got that history. So this virtual um, deployment was you know, deployed just recently. Um, I can monitor it too, just like our SREs could. And actually this one here also have CPU demand of 108%. So there's definitely some contention going on here. Um, and so I'm going to want to turn this over to our VI admin. Hey everybody, Moed's VI admin here. And we're gonna be taking a look at uh, this shopping cart application that we have some concerns about here. So vRealize Operations is connected to vRealize Automation. So it understands uh, all of the different constructs like deployments and blueprints and things like that. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm gonna take a look at our deployments. If I can type it correctly here. And we're gonna go object type deployment. 
And here we can see all of our deployments, right? We have our VMUG open cart deployment. We have our production shopping cart here. So let's go into the VMUG open cart and take a look at uh, you know, everything that VRealize Operations has. So we've got the deployment here. Again, we can see the blueprint, the project that this deployment is associated with, as well as I can see three virtual machines, Linux OS, MySQL, Apache, right? All of these things are in here. So if I go into the metrics view, this is where I can see, again, the deployment right here. Uh, I've got our front end virtual machine. I know that's the front end, not only because it's named front end, but because we have the Linux OS and I can see Apache running on this. So part of this deployment, we're also installing the uh, VRealize Operations Telegraph agent so we can start doing some application monitoring as well. If I go to the MySQL virtual machine, again, I can see the uh, OS, I can see MySQL, as well as the um, databases that are running on top of it. So this is our entire deployment. Now we had some concerns about high CPU utilization here. So I'm gonna just take a look really quick at the MySQL virtual machine. And if I look at CPU demand, right, how much CPU is this virtual machine asking for? And I'm gonna zoom in here because I do see a little spike here. But you know, the spike doesn't last very long. It starts you know, back here and it moves up to 110%. Okay, so the virtual machine is asking for more CPU than it can actually get. So therefore you have contention, right? About 10% contention, but it tapers off um, shortly thereafter. So this is maybe just an artifact of trying to install everything all at once, but let's take a look here. So I could go through, you know, the other virtual machines within this deployment and look through their metrics manually, or I could say, hey, if you realize operations, do some correlation for me. I found this interesting metric, but go ahead and um, I can either say, look across all metrics for this virtual machine, show me if there's any correlation with other metrics, right? Maybe I'm seeing high IO, uh, you know, disk IO, or I can look across all of my peers. So I can say, you know, take a look at CPU demand across all my peer virtual machines, in this case, the other VMs within this deployment. So if I do this, I can see, yep, sure enough, right? MySQL, we've got that high CPU demand, but we've also correlated that with our front end server, same thing, um, and then our load generator, we've got the same thing there. So pretty safe to say that this is just an artifact of the um, installation process. But you know, let's, let's do our diligence, let's go into the details of this virtual machine. We're gonna navigate to the host, right? So VRealize Operations has the application to the infrastructure um, you know, knowledge here. So I can actually expand the host out. I can see the cluster that it's part of. I can also get information from the PDUs. So I can see power draw, um, humidity, temperature, hot row, cold row, um, information within VRealize operations. So we can go pretty far here. Uh, but in this case, I wanna take a look at the host system and I can see that there are eight alerts for this system. So let's take a look and see what is going on there. So, okay, for this host, uh, vSAN uh, disks are unhealthy. Uh, we're violating vSphere security configuration guide. Uplink redundancy is degraded. Uh, okay, so this host is not in the best of shape. I also see uh, that it's violating PCI um, guidelines here for uh, compliance. I'm not too concerned about that because this is only a test system. Um, I'm not actually processing any credit card information on this. Um, but if this were production, yeah, I would be a bit more concerned about that. Um, okay, so the host is unhealthy. Again, it's a test system. We'll, we'll get back to that one um, you know, after this demonstration and, and see what we can do to, to solve all these issues. From a capacity standpoint, right, this is what we wanted to see is, is there enough capacity on this host? Is that what could be causing this contention? And I can definitively say, no, it's not, right? We can see our CPU uh, demand for this host is running about half, right? So we can see um, here's today, right? Here's our uh, history. And then VRealize Operations is projecting that, uh, you know, the um, CPU demand in the future is gonna be somewhere between these two bounds here, right? And then up here, again, we can calculate that we've got more than a year's worth of CPU memory and disk uh, capacity, right? Because this blue line here is not intersecting our overall capacity anywhere on this timeline. So that's looking pretty good. So I think we can kind of definitively say that that was an artifact of the installation process. But let's go into um, our blueprint here. So we're gonna go back to our deployment.
And of course, I could just search for uh, VMUG OC, um, but I just want to show you how we can kind of navigate through this. So we're at the VMUG open cart deployment, um, but I can go into the blueprint here, okay? And the blueprint, we see our VMUG open cart, but then also Moad production is uh, a descendant of this blueprint. So I can go into the details of the Moad production shopping cart. And again, we had those concerns of, um, you know, high CPU usage on these virtual machines. So here's our front end virtual machine. Um, these ones have uh, VRealize Operation Service Discovery has gone in and discovered these services running on this virtual machine. Again, we have that Telegraph agent installed so I can see the Linux OS and uh, Apache. Of course, we can get uh, metrics for uh, these services and the uh, operating system. Um, and then same with uh, MySQL. So let's go in and take a look at some of the metrics here. So I look at my CPU demand. See it's yellow here, it means that this is sort of acting outside of its norm. And for CPU, this one's not terribly too high. I mean, 85%, yeah, it's on the high side, but it's not anything to uh, be too concerned about. But if we take a look at the front end, I could go in and I could actually do some correlation here, but I'm gonna take a look at the front end here and just look at the demand. And yeah, this one is the one to be concerned with. So we're at 120%, um, fairly consistently, you know, early in the morning, we're, we're seeing that. Um, and then things, you know, kind of settle down to around 100 range and then taper off. So this one's a little bit more concerning. Um, I can go ahead and I can take a look at the details here. Again, just take a look and see if this is something um, environmental um, that could be causing this. So, you know, does the host have enough capacity? Um, first of all, I do see some alerts for this host. So let's just take a look at those really quick. And yeah, this is one that I was afraid of seeing is that the ESXi host is violating the PCI um, compliance standards here. So if we jump into this uh, alert here, we can see why, right? So we've got uh, account lockout security failures is uh, greater than the threshold here. I need to set that. Um, the auto lockout timeout, um, the DCUI timeout, is higher than it should be. So I need to go in and configure that. Um, and then like the NTP firewall is set to allow all. So get some work to do, right? We are actually processing uh, credit card information on this host. Um, so yeah, I've got to fix that immediately. Uh, capacity wise, host is looking fine. We're doing okay. So what I can do is I can actually take a look because that virtual machine is you know hitting, uh, asking for so much CPU, I can go in and I can do some right sizing here. Um, you know, we, we figure this is probably undersized. So if I look at um, our undersized virtual machines for data center uh, three, okay, if I go to my BCA cluster, which is where these run, sure enough, I can see our front end and our MySQL virtual machines uh, right here. And I can see I've got one virtual CPU for the front end Apache server and VRealize Operations is recommending I add another here. And same with the MySQL, it's got two virtual CPUs. VRealize Operations is suggesting we double that to four. Memory wise, that's fine, two gigs, two gigs, and it's not recommending any sort of memory increase. That's not where we're um, constrained here. So what I can do with this is I can actually go ahead and I can resize these virtual machines now or I can go to my change control board and say, you know, here's why we need to do this. This is a production system, right? We need to schedule this. So I can go in and I can actually schedule this action to be realized operations once I get that approval. So say, you know, Sunday at 2 a.m. I can tell V realized operations, just go ahead and resize this. So resize prod. Um, and then I can, you know, receive an email once it's complete just to verify. Um, but then I also have to check here to say that I understand this could be a disruptive process, right? If we don't have hot add enabled on these virtual machines, then we realize operations will have to power it down, reconfigure it, and then bring them back up. So, okay, I understand that. So, all right, that's scheduled now. And I can actually go into Automation Central here and see that resize action uh, down here scheduled for Sunday at 2 a.m. Now, other things we can do within Automation Central are, you know, delete old snapshots. I could actually set this up um, as a recurring job. So say every Sunday, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete uh, any snapshots that are older than seven days. Of course, I can configure this to something else. I can power off or delete idle virtual machines, uh, delete powered off virtual machines, and just do some 
you know, downsizing, scale up, and even just reboot virtual machines uh, on a schedule. Of course, you can select you know, the scope of what uh, you want this job to be, but um, there's a lot of options here. So lastly, I just want to take a look at, we do have some dashboards for uh, our uh, MOAD production here, and I've actually got, um, it's loaded up here, but under favorites, I have this pinned as a favorite dashboard uh, in Vrealize Operations 8.6. And so here, right, again, we can see this whole deployment. I can see the lo load, uh, load generator, the front end, and the MySQL uh, virtual machine, right, and all of the services that are running on it. Um, I can get a price overview of this. So what is my month-to-date cost for running this production system here? Uh, today's cost, month-to-date price, all of that stuff. Um, and then some KPIs here. So I can see the database KPI uh, for guest file system utilization is yellow. We're at 78% uh, file system utilization. So I want to try to stay ahead of that, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, either clean things up or I'm going to resize. Uh, web KPIs all look good. Um, and then over here, the web user experience. This is kind of cool. Vrealize Operations can um, actually go out and reach our production website and it's saying, okay, the response code I'm getting back is 200. That's a good thing, right? Um, it's taking uh, the last collection was 3.2 seconds for um, it to respond. That's a little on the slow side. We're gonna wanna take a look at that. Uh, but then the result code is zero. So everything is looking good um, you know, from the retail production side, apart from the PCI compliance of that host, um, and then you know, resizing these virtual machines. So I think with that, I'm gonna turn this over to the network administrator to show you this within vRealize Network Insight. Hey everybody, I'm Moad's network admin, and in the remaining couple of minutes here, I wanna show you this application through the eyes of vRealize Network Insight. So vRealize Network Insight's already discovered our shopping cart application. So if I type in application, Moad production shopping cart already comes up. So by looking at the flows and everything, vRealize Network Insight has discovered this. So if I go into our production shopping cart, I can see some basic information about this. Um, you know, incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, how many flows there are, um, there's 12 unprotected uh, or denied. Um, and then we have traffic coming from eight countries. That's pretty interesting. Uh, so that means our uh, Moad production shopping cart, our web front end is getting hit from the United Kingdom, Denmark, US, Germany, Norway, Spain, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. So, hey, Moad is growing globally here. We're getting a lot of attention. Um, down here, we can see the virtual machines, right? We have our web tier that talks to the internet. Um, and then our database tier, um, and then our, uh, our load generator here. So that's all looking pretty good. And then if I go down uh, a little bit further, I can actually take a look at um, the micro segmentation here. So micro segmentation is going to allow us to create firewall rules to really you know, constrain uh, who can talk to each of these uh, virtual machines, right? So in this case, um, again, if I look at the internet, only the web tier is talking on the internet. So that is a good thing. A um, couple of uh, you know, virtual machines here. We can see the database and web tier are talking. Um, that's all good. So what I can do is, you know, if I'm happy with this configuration and I don't see anything um, too crazy here, I can actually export these rules as a CSV or as an XML file, um, which I can then take and import into my firewall like NSX. So all of that's kind of taken care of for me. That's pretty cool. And that's really something I want to do, especially since this is a PCI compliant application. Uh, speaking of PCI compliance, I can actually go ahead and I can um, you know, assess that. So if I look for application and if I look for MOAD, I can go ahead and assess this. So I can look over the last day's worth of uh, data here. Um, and then this just shows what sections of PCI is you know, kind of in scope here for vRealize Network Insight. Um, I can see the uh, uh, virtual machines for this. I can see the uh, security groups that these virtual machines are in, um, you know, various security groups, who's in what, um, any security tags that I might have. Uh, but then if I go down here to flows, uh, this one's actually kind of interesting. So again, we're gonna see that, um, you know, kind of donut graph of uh, who's talking to what, right? Um, I can see the various flows that are coming through. Uh, but then down here, clear text protocol flows. Again, Vrealize Network Insights looking at all of that network traffic and it sees clear text coming from uh, the front end server going out to, or from London coming into the uh, front end server here. 
So that might mean that somewhere in our application, we don't have HTTPS turned on. Um, could be something else going on there. So definitely something we want to check out. Um, again, you know, as a you know, company that accepts credit card transactions, definitely don't want to be seeing clear text uh, coming over the wire here. So that is just like a lightning round look at uh, some of the capabilities of Realize Network Insight for uh, Moad here. So on behalf of the Moad Cloud team, I want to thank you all for coming today and joining me for this demonstration of the vRealize suite from day zero to day two operations. Thanks so much for coming. Have a great day.